Welcome to the Little League Softball World Series, presented by Dix's Sporting Goods. It is Elimination Day in Greenville, the second of our four games on deck as Milford Little League of Connecticut faces St. Albert's Softball Little League from Alberta. The pros are on hand today as young players will be performing in front of their idols. Athletes Unlimited Pro Softball players are here cheering them on. Words of encouragement, posing for pictures. Tomorrow the pros will play. Today belongs to the youngsters. Both of these teams hoping to do what Ohio did earlier this morning. Mila Hamley, complete game 12 strikeout performance for Ohio. Yeah, giddy up. Ohio for nothing win sending California packing and sending the team from Austin town on to the next round One team is gone. We got three teams that are two and oh a handful of other teams facing elimination including the two We will see here in just a moment Matt Chick alongside former Little League star Jenny Dalton Hill and Jenny what a fun day a fun week on hand not only do we have the little leaguers here we've got pro softball players here two worlds colliding converging and supporting each other this week yeah both of these organizations have been wanting to hold hands and have an event like this for quite some time it took a couple of years but now the pros sitting in the stands watching these little leaguers play rather than the other way around and they're going to be watching a pressure packed game today because neither of these two teams want to go home canada didn't win its first game against puerto rico but didn't quit either trailed 10 nothing gave up seven runs in the fourth scored nine runs in the final three innings i was impressed with the way that the bats responded after that huge fourth inning with it put them so far behind they scored three runs in the final in each of the final three innings to be able to come back with a great response but not enough to come away with the win they came up short in their first game last night in connecticut's second game they trailed 4-1 in the fourth to New York and wound up taking a 5-4 lead late. That they were able to put the bat on the ball with a ton of power, able to score runs and give themselves the lead, impressed with the way that the bats showed up big time to give them the edge, but it wasn't enough. The fifth inning, big hits and a big response by New York gave them the win the 6 to 5 win it was errors that plagued Connecticut that gave them the loss yeah six runs on three hits for New York as New York takes the game over Connecticut Connecticut splitting their first two games after an 11-1 win over Italy let's meet the team from Milford my name is Maya Brown and my favorite movie is Utopia my name is Kaylee Glenn, and my favorite MLB team is the New York Yankees. My name is Audrey O'Connell, and my favorite softball player is Josie Muffley. My name is Emma Bonanno, and my favorite athlete is Paige Beckers. My name is Sam Marini, and my favorite animal is flamingos. My name is Holly Kuhn, and my favorite food is Party Little Bites. My name is Riley Fagan Davis, and my favorite food is steak. My name is Grace Weber, and my favorite food is chicken tenders. My name is Marina Cosmos, and my favorite athlete is Montana Phelps. My name is Addie McKenna Hansen, and my favorite team is the Boston Red Sox. My name is Emily Sparingo, and my favorite athlete is Sis Bates. My name is Danny Kitansky, and my favorite softball team is the Alabama Crimson Tide. The champs from the New England <laughs> Regional. Again, 11-1 winner over Italy, 6-5 loser to New York. And they've been hitting the ball pretty well. Hit 300 in the first game, 270 in the second game. See if they can keep it going here today with a pretty good lineup of 1 through 12. And they will be facing Canada's Abigail Hybrid, who had a pretty good outing in the first game. Most of the runs given up not by her. Took a... On a 20-minute break during that game as they replaced her. They did not record it out. She came back in and tried to keep her team in it. Yeah, it was a tough relief situation as Abigail Highbrink gave away gave way to an to a different pitcher, did not record an out, had to come back in. Tons of walks, tons of hit by pitch and wild pitches. Good start there as Sammy Marini grounds out to Megan Becker for the first down. And there were some errors yesterday for Canada as well, or a couple of days ago. 
against Puerto Rico, trying to clean things up today. Here's Mariana Cosmas. 12 year old, that one's inside, 1 0. Cosmas will be catching today. Yeah, her older brothers, Mike and Nick, are her favorite athletes. Another inside, 2 0. When Cosmos had a really good first game here at the World Series. She went two for three with three RBI. The bat went silent, though, in yesterday's matchup. Still hitting 400 on the week. Couple of runs, a few runs batted in, three runs scored. Milford Little League, out of Milford, Connecticut. And draws the walk. Now that is number 17, Riley Fagan-Davis. Riley Fagan-Davis, 12-year-old. One of the returners from last year's team that made it here. Let's see if anyone wants to test the arm of Zeta Campbell. Yeah, early on, you like to see some runners in motion with some aggressive base running with the defense pulled in. It does open up an op opportunity to steal a base. There's some familiar names on this team from Connecticut from a year ago. Riley Fagan Davis, one of those players that was on the World Series team last year. She's joined by teammate Emily Springo from last year, but also a sister of one of her former players, Maddie Bonanno's sister, Emma Bonanno, on this team. Seven straight balls here. And finally, a strike from the right arm of Hybrid. Well, Matt, one of the unique things about this Canadian team is that the battery calls the pitches. Very unique anymore to see a catcher actually calling the game back behind the plate. And it's one of the things that we've been cheering, especially Michelle Smith on those coach calls when she heard that the battery called the pitches. Ground ball to first. That's Becker thinking of throwing to second. She will hold it. But Becker has recorded the first two outs here of this inning. At first base. Now batting number 24, Emily Springo. There is Emily Springo, 13 years old, one of the players from last year's team. Hitting 800 this week, four for five, five runs batted in, big swing and miss. Time for the most hits coming into today, this week with four. Yeah, she's been hot at the plate, lighting it up. So good. Just one of her at bats has gone down as an out. Oh. Lays off of that one. Didn't go at all. That is three and one now. Check that two and one. Here to Emily Sparingo. Favorite athlete, Sis Bates, is on hand today. Part of Athletes Unlimited. A couple of games coming up tomorrow, and those professionals in the stands here in the morning game, and another squad coming in here now. 2 2 pitch. King going to miss. Big strikeout there. Springo with a runner at second. Abigail Heidbrink. It's the big swing in Springo down on strikes. I Brink able to get 12 strikeouts in her first appearance out here. This one gets her first one to get her team out of the inning. A nice little rise ball to get herself back in the dugout. North Carolina team along with some pros checking it out here today in the sun-soaked Greenville, North Carolina, Elm Street Park. Canada coming up to the plate. Let's meet him. Thank <laughs> you. 
My name is Reese Fertz, and my nickname is Smalls because I'm the shortest on the team. My name is Megan Becker, and my favorite team is UCLA. My name is Ali Danilak, and my favorite color is purple. My name is Bruce Common, and my favorite gibbet is my Spider-Man. My name is Paige Hipkin, and my favorite athlete is Christine Sinclair. My name is Ryan Bazandowski day and my favorite color is pink. My name is Abigail Heidbank, and my nickname is Wheezy, because I'm from Louisiana. My name is Aaliyah Riappel, and my favorite movie is A League of Their Own. My name is Emma Fukushima, and my favorite show is Outer Banks. My name is Zeta Campbell, and my favorite team is LSU Tigers. My name is Rhea Bergen, and my favorite food is spring rolls. My name is Cleo Cotto, and my favorite food is poutine. Uh, we'll address that poutine situation later. <laughs> uh, Canada, look at that, yes. Keep the shirt open on this hot day. Canadian fans, clothing optional. <laughs> um, in the booth, required. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Especially when the camera's on. Canada batting order. Raya Bergen going to lead things off, followed by the coach's daughter, Allie Danilak. They're looking to get off to a, a better start than they did yesterday, and already they are in defense. And we'll see if... Bergen can get things going. Grace Weber in the circle. Starting things off here for Milford. Elimination day, elimination game here in Greenville. Grace Weber, the 12 year old. What are we going to see from her? You're going to see low 50s coming from the circle from Grace Weber. She has a fastball, a changeup, a curveball, and a drop ball. But according to head coach Brian Glenn, he says everything cuts away with her spin. So it has a little bit of side spin that will cut away from a right-handed hitter. Said she likes her curveball the best. That one's some gas, two and one. Again, nine innings pitched so far through the two games. Seven runs, just one earned. That speaks to the defensive mishaps that... Connecticut has had that one is off the plate well Matt it would have been a much different game had the defense shown up behind Weber yesterday in that game against New York those seven errors proved to be costly three run oh that one might have been up out of the zone Bergen swings at it now we're full Rhea Bergen, solid in all positions they put her at. She's a shortstop today, leading things off for Canada in the dirt. And does her job and gets on base. Really good start by Canada to show discipline at the plate and make Weber bring this ball up into the zone. Bergen in regionals was three for three in stolen bases. See how aggressive they get here to start things off. Well, Danilak, that one skied and goes foul. Fortunate there is the first baseman, Bonanno. Unable to grab that one. We've seen some unique combinations that coaches have used now that the Little League rules have changed, making it a continuous lineup. So you see speed, Backed up by contact, back, backed up by power. And right now, Danilak, a lot of speed here in the box. Danilak was 0 for 3 against Puerto Rico on Sunday. Had an error in the field as well. 1-1, one, one, swing and a miss. 1-2. Two here from Grace Weber. And a little different look down in the third base coach's box. It's not Heather Danilak, the head, the manager for the team. It's actually Caitlin Macbeth taking over the reins down there in the third base coach's box today. Swing and miss. Danilak goes down. 
First strikeout for Weber, one away. That rise ball is so hard to stay off of, knowing that that pitch looks big coming into your eyes, but it's hard to catch up to it as it continues to climb above the letters. Danilak goes down on that big swing on a pitch she just can't get on top of. Brings up Megan Becker. And that was a hard shot under the glove of Glenn at third. First hit of the day here for Canada. And staying aggressive early in account, knowing that the last pitches have been up in the zone. She attacks up, drives it hard in that 5-6 hole. Great shot. Hitting it where they ain't. Nice little single for Becker. Becker's had herself a decent week. That's her second hit of the week after going one for three against Puerto Rico. Now Leah Riopel first pitch swinging. A couple of runs scored for Riopel and the loss to Puerto Rico. RBI is well. There's no crying in softball. <laughs> In the dirt, one and one. I like that the kids watch those those movies. That is an ancient movie, truly. Easy. <laughs> Late 90s, early 90s? Yeah, it's a great show. And I actually was able to meet some of the cast of that and some of those original AAG PBL players meeting up with USA Women's National Team as they compete up in Canada this week playing baseball. One and two here to Riopelle with two on. Riopelle, the third, stepping on third is Haley Glenn. And now two down and two on. And Canada's coming out swinging. They are making sure that they don't go down quietly here today. They have to stay disciplined on that ball up in the zone that Grace Weber is going to continue to use. I've not seen her use the changeup yet. That's one that she's keeping in her back pocket. Zeta Campbell, catcher here for Canada, was one for two in Sunday's loss to Puerto Rico. It's 13 later this month out of Sherwood Park. So just call her a self-motivator. She finds her skills. Helps get practice going with the girls. The 0-1. Off speed. That's a nice one there for Weber. And there's that change of speed I was expecting to see. That is a devastating pitch coming and backing up after the velocity that she's been throwing with. Really nice pitch. Keeping it down in the zone. The perfect spot for a changeup. The 0-2 now to Campbell. Ground ball that gets by the catcher Cosmos. Each runner advances 60 feet. In wild pitch. Becker at third, Riapel at second. When you mentioned Zeta Campbell's self-starter mentality, she is one of those players that is not afraid to work on her own, puts in the extra work in the dark when no one's watching and hoping it'll pay off here in this pressure situation to put a run across. Campbell skies this one in the infield, two outs. Now there's three. Holly Kuhn makes the grab, two left after a base hit and a walk. No score for one. Little League Softball World Series on ESPN is presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. One of the legends of the game, Cat Osterman, throwing out the first pitch. Nearly took the glove off from uh, Santa Campbell. That was, that was coming in hot. What a great event. What a great week here at the Little League Softball World Series. And Cat is with us. Uh, what has this experience been like for you? 
you know, short and sweet so far. We yeah, had right. him last night. <laughs> right. But um, just coming into the stadium and obviously the West team um, was still hanging out, getting to talk to them a little bit, even though they've been eliminated. Just the excitement of getting here. Um, you know, so many athletes play Little League, and I know I did growing up, and we never made it this far. But to be able to see this event and the way Greenville's putting it on, it, it's, it's huge, and it's really a cool environment to be around. Well, and how cool is it to be able to come out here into an, a situation where these girls know you and they look up to you, and now you can give back in a pretty personal way? It's really fun, and I think, you know, Jenny, you probably know it. As soon as you have kids, things kind of totally alter. And I have a stepdaughter who was playing Little League a couple years ago, and we watched this on TV, and, you know, she said, oh, I want to be there one day. Now, granted, we've, we've taken an alternate route, and we're no longer playing softball, but to be able to have athletes that, yeah, you, they know these athletes, you know, not just myself, but the Athlete Unlimited athletes that are out here, and they have role models to look up to and tangibly that we can they can interact with. I mean, I got to play and watch a lot of the national team players, but that was it. You didn't have pro league you got to see. So it's really cool to be out here and have these athletes be able to interact and you know give back and talk to them about the sport and just about this type of environment and their career up to this point because obviously this is the highlight of it so far. Danny Katansky at the plate. Ground ball back to Heidbrick. One down here in the second. You are a member of the Little League Hall of Excellence as well. What, what are those Little League memories that you reflect on as you look and see these girls at this age? Yeah, you know, Little League was really my start. Um, I started in first grade, quit for a little bit and played soccer. And then once our Little League grew again and first and fifth graders weren't on the same team, went back and played. Um, but it was really where I started, where I fell in love with the game. I had coaches that... You know, we played because it was fun. It wasn't it wasn't do or die. At the end of the day, it was did we get better and um, were we learning? And so, for me, I look back and you know played in Bear Creek. I still I think have my, my green jersey as part of a quilt my grandma made before um, she passed, and so I have that. And I think I sent my hat to the museum. They have that, but I had that little league hat forever. And I just remember I'd look back at it and be like, oh, that's the one time I made the All Star <laughs> team. And um, you know, you get to play with your community, your friends. It's just so much more of a tight-knit group, and I think it's fun for these athletes to be able to compete in that type of environment to where it is their best friends left and right, and, you know, their community gets behind them. When you were able to play in three different Olympics to be able to go and represent USA, how is that different? It, I feel like it's very similar to wearing your city name and then your country name. It is. I mean, you wear your city name or your little league. You know, I think you start with your little league, and then as you grow through regionals and up to this point, you become a little bit bigger. It goes from being your city to the regional. Um, but it's very similar because there's a pride that comes out of at age 12, you know your community. So representing that is what you know. And then obviously the older you get, you get to represent, um, you know, your college and, like you said, USA. And now you know what it means to represent USA and the pride with that. Um, so, yeah, it grows throughout your career, but, I mean, nothing nothing better than wearing USA across your chest mm -hmm. and being able to compete in the Olympics. Um, fortunate enough to, like you said, done it three times, but with some incredible athletes by my side as well. Ken Osmond here up in the booth. Legend and many other softball stars th that are here. Just being able to, to meet and greet, and we, we have these questionnaires that these young ladies fill out. As Heidbrink gets another strikeout, that's her second of the day for Canada. And they, they fill out, hey, who are your favorite athletes that you look up to? And so many pro softball players that they look up to. Just a different opportunity that these girls have. And now they can can touch you, Ken, and go, oh, my goodness, I can do what you did, and I can play professionally now. Those options are now on the table. Yeah, and I think that's the cool um, situation with this partnership between Little League and Athletes Unlimited this week is that these athletes get to go see those pros play and be able to, you know, if you see it, you can be it. And they get to watch a pro game and say, you know what, one day that's what I want to do. And, um, again, growing up, you know, there was a pro league, but it was tucked away in the East Coast in Florida, and I only knew about it because my grandma lived in Tampa. Um, <laughs> Jenny might laugh at this, but I'm pretty sure I had a fire sticks shirt for a long, Legit. long time, right? Um, but, but no one else knew about it because there wasn't TV coverage, this, that, and the other. And so now it's a genuine career path for these girls to be able to go play pro softball. Let's hang out with Kat Osterman for uh, another half inning here. That was a quick one. We got some more things to discuss with the legend here in the booth. No score through an inning and a half.
This is the Little League Softball World Series presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Matt Schick, Jenny Dalton-Hill, Kat Osterman here in the booth for another half hitting. Three-time National Player of the Year and Olympian and some stars of the past, present, and future all here at Elm Street Park at Stalling Stadium. And Kat, a part of this week-long event coming in yesterday. Got your family in town. And how cool is this to just share it not only with your friends but also your family here? It's really exciting. Um, as I mentioned, my stepdaughter played for a little bit, but sure. she loves softball. So obviously followed when I played, but she knows all the Athlete Unlimited athletes. We watch this on TV, so she'll come home and be like, well, who won today? <laughs> you know, that was this morning. Well, who's playing today? Is the Texas team playing today? No, they won last night when we were flying, so we don't get to see them today. <laughs> um, but it's just a fun event event as i said we watch it on tv so to be here in person and get the atmosphere in person and the intimacy of this ballpark um it's been really fun so far and having two north carolina teams definitely creates the atmosphere kind of like oklahoma in oklahoma city right that one just off the glove of holly coon at shortstop we'll see how they score that one but canada's got a base runner to begin the second inning well that's a hard one off the bat knowing you got to take a hard drop step back to your glove side to be able to catch that ball and with the infield you've got to read it off the bat pretty quickly she took a little bit of a drop step but then didn't reverse back fast enough disappointed in herself but a good job of getting it reining it in and keeping it from creating too much damage we are talking earlier with Victoria Hayward, who's here as well, just as we see this bunt put down here by Kuroto. Advances the runner, now ahead of Steve from Hybrid going to third. Out at third base. That was a close play. And you wonder if they're going to challenge this. That slide was a pretty good one. And I wonder if she's actually asking about obstruction, too. We'll see. Maybe she's going to ask... This umpire saw anything differently. That's second base umpire, Pavel Kisperik. Well, and over at second base, she had to take a pretty wide turn because of the way that the defender was covering the bag. And with that, if there's contact made, it does protect her between second and third. It looked as though she may have slid under the tag, but the conversation has to happen starting back at second base before they advance over to the conversation that would take us to maybe a replay over there at third. So remember, as a defender, you have to make sure that you give way for a runner to be able to touch the bag and without mm. any kind of interference. And you could see there that as the shortstop came over to cover second base, she was in the way of the runner and contact was made. You're almost programmed as a runner. At least coaches try to tell you, hey, if, if, there's, if you're touching a, a defender, keep going if there's obstruction. But it's hard to see if that call is made or not. We'll see if the umpires... What'd you see here, Kat? You're up here. What'd you see? I was trying not to put on my analyst <laughs> while you were talking. No, I think as she rounds, obviously, the shortstop yeah. is too close to the bag. I think the big thing, and not that you want to knock the shortstop over, but as a runner, you have to make it known that you make contact. Yeah, it has to be obvious. Sometimes yeah. you, you don't want to spin them around. You don't want to take it like football and put on your shoulder pads and, like, make it a, an egregious kind of run into. But you've got to make sure you draw the umpire's attention to the contact that is made to be able to protect yourself between those next two bases. Yeah, with that replay, you can. it almost looks like they both just kind of turn their shoulders. So you might be contact, maybe not. From our angle, obviously, behind you can see it. But a great play nonetheless, and the left fielder cover in third. Yeah, look at that. Secondary backup <laughs> plays, everybody coming around like a well-oiled machine to make it happen here in the World Series. Tough double play after the leadoff batter gets on. And now nobody on here for Emma Fukushima. Well, Matt, when we think about last night, there were quite a few errors that happened by this Connecticut team. So look at them being able to really sharpen things up and come out with some really good defensive plays. And Kat, what's it like when you play with a defense that you know has your back? In the circle, you're doing all you can, but what's it like when you know you've got a buttoned-up defense? When you can trust your defense, you can pitch relaxed because even if you maybe miss a spot a little bit and a ball gets put in play, you're not holding your breath, hoping that a play gets made. And so when you're confident in your defense, it allows you to do a little bit different things in the circle, knowing that you don't necessarily have to try to get the swing and miss. You're not always having to try to play to weak contact. Um, and at the same time, if somebody gets a hold of one with a good swing, you know your defense is there to go all out for you. One-two here to Fukushima. 
Swing and a miss. Started out with a, a threatening portion of the inning, but a double play and then a strikeout. Kat Ostman, thanks for hanging with us. Thanks for having me. Enjoy the rest of your week. Awesome to have the legend here in the booth and a lot of legends here in the stadium. Connecticut and Canada. No score here in this elimination game at the Little League Softball World Series in the top of the third. We had Kat Osterman, the legend in the booth. Speaking of legends, that catcher, Zeta Campbell, had a greeting from one. Hi, Zeta. It's Jen Schroeder. I am so excited to meet you. I'm wishing you the best of luck at the Little League World Series. I will be watching and I will be cheering you on and I cannot wait to see you on TV. Best of luck in the entire tournament, and I am your biggest fan. Mwah. That's so cool. Oh my goodness. And it is cool to be able to have those moments with people that you look up to, giving you the shout out. Becker makes the catch over by the dugout and gets nearly tackled by her catcher hide break in celebration. <laughs> Gotta love it when your defense backs you up. And Kat was just talking about that, how fun it is to play with a defense that you know has your back. Nice little play by Becker to start off with. I know. Pretty cool. You get to be a part of this. Get a greeting from Jen Schroeder. You're wearing the gear provided by Jen Schroeder. I mean, Not I bad. Think, I think technically it's by Easton. But yeah, okay, yes, yeah. Jen did create the gear right. sold by Easton. That, that is true. She didn't bring buckets of gear and go, hey, I'm donating this. <laughs> Just to Zeta. I'm only giving this to Zeta. <laughs> but Jen does create custom gear for those teams that make the college softball World Series in Oklahoma City in this last year, doing that for... Ali Shipman of Alabama creating a really cool set of personalized gear for her to be able to play in Oklahoma City. Emma Bonanno. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout there. That is the fourth of the day for Hyde Break. And she's dialed in again. Yeah, she is filling the zone and using that top of the zone to get the swing and miss. An impressive pitch that continues to yield that swing. It is so hard to lay off that pitch because it looks good out of the hand. But as it comes in, it continues to just stay too high and can't catch up. With Grace Weber. Starter in the circle today for Connecticut, 2-0. She calls this team a family, really tight-knit group. As this team has grown so close, and after they won states, they shared a good cry, she said. Oh, for four so far this week with a few strikeouts. That is a really nice cut. Very balanced in her legs, approaching the ball nicely. Just is not coming away with contact. High break. Drop third strike. Tags her out, completes the strikeout. And the fifth of the day for the Canadian pitcher. Three up, three down. She retires the side for the second straight inning. No score in Greenville. That chick, Jenny Dalton Hill, no score, Connecticut and Canada. Elimination game here at the Little League Softball World Series. Two hits for Canada, Connecticut still looking for their first base knock. Some great good luck letters and letters of encouragement from the Athletes Unlimited squad that's here. Yeah, Taylor McQuillan sitting in the stands right now. Just talking with those players sitting up here. Pretty cool to be able to get a handwritten note from and well wishes from some of the people that you've looked up to for so many years. Like that compete and smile a lot. I saw that in one of the letters. There's Taylor. Yep. She's against the wall there in the back. Yep, right there in the middle, passing on knowledge to those North Carolina players. Big pitcher, quality pitcher for Arizona. Back in her collegiate days. 
a cool setting to be able to just sit next to these professional athletes from Athletes Unlimited, professional softball players who have been here before. Maybe not necessarily on this stage, not in this stadium, but have played at this level. Ray's coming to center. Riley Fagan Davis with the catch. Yeah, she tracked that ball so well, had a beat on it early and just able to coast underneath it, rain it down in. Really nice play in the outfield. Sometimes you can hold your breath when those balls go up, but not here at the World Series. You've got some quality outfielders playing here. Paige Hipkin, a 13-year-old. Fouls away the first pitch. Call her Pager. Fan of Vladimir Guerrero Jr., Vladdy Jr., big Texas Longhorn softball fan as well. She might know Kat Osterman. She might just know who she is. <laughs> that one off the end of the bat, right back to the glove of Weber. Two down. Boy, that changeup really keeps you off balance. You almost have, how do you read that out of the glove so, or out of the hand so that you don't go forward? It's all about making sure that you're balanced in your legs. And the way you attack a changeup is as soon as you see it, you go ahead and sink into your legs a little bit to keep the bat back. That one couldn't do so. Allowed the bat to trickle out and off the end of the bat. You sometimes think maybe I can just foul it off. That one, she got too much of the barrel. Are you looking for anything, any signal? What what can you typically be tipped off by? Well, when when your pitcher swings the arm back, you can sometimes see a grip. That one in foul territory going over to make the catch against the rail. Kaylee Glenn has made a couple of nice plays here today. Put a star next to that one. Defense showing up right now beautiful play in foul territory she comes right up against the wall to be able to get that one but look at the way she tracks it in goes so fast works so hard to find it find the fence and get her team out of that inning it's time to pick up the bats That chick, Jenny Dalton Hill, Abigail Heidbrink, she has been tough to hit today for New England. It's been that rise ball that's been so dominant, bringing a ton of power through the pitches. And then she pulls the string, too. A little bit of change-up action, got another one. Really nice move for her to be able to have those five strikeouts on the day. Five strikeouts so far today after a 12-strikeout performance in the loss to Puerto Rico. We're not striking out on the food here this week. We've shown enough shots of the Kona ice that we figured, you know what, we gotta we gotta venture over there. And it was, a, you know, it's two minutes in between innings, 90 seconds. That was a good bad dash. You're not out of breath. No, I mean, I needed the Kona ice. We've seen it all this whole time. <laughs> what flavor did you get? I got the uh, Caribbean cherry. Yours looks pretty uh, neon yellow. Pineapple uh, is a pineapple flavor. Nice. Can't remember How the is exact. It? It's not bad. It's not. It's pretty good. Kona Ice. Kona Ice crafted. We had the ice cream yesterday. That was a little heavy. That's what ice cream is. Yes. This is more refreshing, less heavy. Refreshing is what we're going to call it. On a hot day like this, mm. Kona Ice, they should be making a million dollars because it is so hot, so humid out there. Okay, maybe not a million. That might be pushing it. But <laughs> with the kind of fans that we've got out here, you know that there's kids saying, Mom, I want a Kona Ice tell you as a parent you hear that Kona ice driving through the neighborhood you turn the volume up of the radio in the house <laughs> make sure no one can hear it make I sure it, I don't know that Kona ice is like the ice cream truck back in the day when my kids were little I called it the music truck because I didn't want them to know that it sold ice cream and we we're gonna have to run outside with dollar bills it's a real feel 103 degrees that someone say that the thing they told their kids growing up was the music was the indication from the truck that they're out of it. <laughs> That's classic. That I love that. Sorry. Oh, oh, they're, they're playing the, every time they come by, they're playing the song. <laughs> we're out. That's right. Come back inside, Billy. <laughs> you have to get creative sometimes as a parent. You do. <laughs> Thanks to those uh, bringing us the Kona ice. We will lunch on that. You got hot dogs, concession stand food. You've got the food trucks out beyond the right field wall. 
Yeah, that kid's saying, I wanted a tuna ice, not a hot dog. She's like, finish your hot dog first, honey. You are a mom. I am a mom. <laughs> you, actually, you actually literally are. I literally am. And a grandmother. Congratulations. Thank you. So excited. That one fair territory. Nice field there by Becker for the first out. It's a good try on the drag bunt, but typically you want to take that drag bunt down the third baseline to prevent that easy pickup and tag. So that collision could have been a little messy, but you want to take that drag bunt down the other side. I like that. You see the first base coach saying, hey, that's, a, that's Nick Campbell. Excuse me, Mike Bonanno and John Marini are there coaches along with Brian Glenn good good sportsmanship there from the first base coach hey good job good job I think he was also checking on her with that with that little collision but that was that's John Marini over there in first base as Mike Bonanno was the head coach of this team last year as his older daughter was playing on this field right back to the glove of hybrid Yeah, the excitement of the World Series can be downloaded in the new Little League World Series app. Fans can view schedules, watch highlights, and plan their experience using the official Little League World Series app. Download today for Apple and Android devices. Yeah, that's a pitch you want to attack in the zone. You're seeing quite a bit of velocity coming from Hydrink right now. She's feeling pretty good dealing in the circle. Sammy Marini trying to get on base here with two down. Led the team and runs batted in in the regionals and back to back with a lazy loopers to Abigail Hydrink. If she's not striking them out, she's getting them out. Eight pitch inning for Abby. Canada trying to get a run on the board next. with Athletes Unlimited, congratulations on making the Little League Softball World Series. Work hard and do your best. Are you requiring Arizona players to have to be a part of this thing? I mean, it's time to give back, ladies. And so all the Wildcats <laughs> so far are showing up well. Taylor McQuillan in the stands, Lisa Dunham with the shout out. And, uh, I'm up here doing my best. Matt Chick along with future Big 12 legend. <laughs> I know. Jenny Dalton Hill. That's hard to say. Isn't that something? That's a big change for me. It went from Pac-10 to Pac-12. That was hard enough. And now we're going to have to go a whole different route. But that means all of our all of our records stand, right? Because there will never be another. <laughs> right now it's just the four-pack trying to beat. And it's That's right. Any looking. conference records you held are likely going to remain intact. Forever. For this was all. <laughs> this was all part of your diabolical plan. You were the orchestrator yeah. of this conference realignment for your no, softball I records. Did not want that to happen. That very was very sad week last week in college athletics for a lot of people. Just to. This is why Little League is so fun. You don't have to worry about realignment. It's, this is a 12-team event, 12-team playoff, so to say. We actually did have some realignment with the New England bracket and all of that coming. So. Can't say it never happens here. Reese Burtz fouls that one away. Still no score here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Elimination game. 12 U softball. That one's foul. Dead ball off the foot. For Canada looking for their first win. Connecticut already has a win. Defeated. Italy on Sunday, 11 to 1. Then last night was a tough luck loser to New York. They out hit New York, but had infinitely more errors in the field. Lost that one six to five. Two two to Verts. Well, you can tell the strategy for Verts is to make herself as small as possible <laughs> standing in the box. Looking for Team Canada to get a win. Who has not had a win at the World Series since 2018? They've lost nine straight. Trying to change that here today. Her nickname, Smalls. 
Killing me, Smalls. Sorry, I had to say it. That was my line. But it might be the last AB. We just don't know. We had to work it in. That's true. 12 year old, though. What a great young player. Future's so bright for her. Love seeing players smaller in stature still on this big stage. My 11 year old daughter, a very petite herself. And love to see ones that, that look like her be here on the stage. Well, that's the cool thing. When you see the Athletes Unlimited players show up or when you watch Team USA play, you have all different body types playing because you need different skill sets to be successful. If you have a team full of tall, lanky players, you're going to struggle with short game. If you have a team full of stocky big hitters, you're going to struggle defensively. So it comes down to making sure you have a little bit of everything mixed in on your team. I mean, if I was built like my, like Cat Osterman, I would 100% be a pitcher too. Bergen right back to the pitcher. Weber, quick reaction time. Snares that one for the second out of the fourth. That was a hard shot off the bat of Bergen coming away with a really nice shot, but she threw it right back to Grace Weber. And reaction kept her safe that you see a lot of masks being worn by pitchers and infielders now knowing that those hard shots are tough to defend and very good athletic position right there to be able to come away with a nice out. Allie Danilak showing bunt, pulling back, falling it off. Now the, the fielding mask, something that is part of softball at the earliest of stages when you're seeing it even in division one softball worn by yeah. a lot of pitchers we've seen so many balls back to the face of pitchers because they release the ball so close to the batter and as a father of a daughter who plays softball and three boys who play baseball I am always stunned that baseball doesn't require something similar with those rocket shots back up at the pitcher who, you, know, you throw batting practice you got the L screen there, you're just a sitting duck. Well, that you better make sure your pitches are moving. And you've got a change <laughs> right. of speed, right? But it's more, I think it's more important for those corner infielders yep. who are so close to the batter. Especially when you can square, pull back, and swing away. Well, especially right now with Danilak up, she's got one strike on her, so the short game is an option, and the defenders on the corners are playing so tight. And there's that pullback like you were talking about, Matt. It's the fake bunt hit that can be so dangerous for those corner defenders who are crashing quickly. Allie Danilak. That one is low, and she's got a two-out walk. With a little dab on first base. Nice. <laughs> nice move. That'll work. What would your move be, Matt? Would you have a cool... I don't know. I always like to sling the arrow, but I don't know if you could do that on a walk. <laughs> Dominant walk. <laughs> Becker, that one's going to drop. Megan Becker putting that one just in short left field. And now two on, two out, and the first run of the game is 120 feet away in the form of Allie Denelak. Well, Becker, perfect on the day, putting the ball in play, finding it where they ain't. Nice little poke into the grass to put herself on, extend the inning, and give Canada a runner in scoring position. Leah Riopel now. Canada 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position. Denelak, that throw back up the middle. Snared by shortstop Kuhn. You know Cosmos is going to be very wary of that. You get Danilak is very speedy. Trying to sprint off the base to draw something. Riopel swings and misses there. And Danilak closer to second that time around, knowing that Cosmos is not afraid to let it go and try to make her vulnerable over there at second base. Big at bat here. Two outs, two on, no score in the fourth. Elimination game in Greenville. When I like that approach by Rhea Pell in that last pitch, she was kind of in yes, yes, no mode, meaning she was ready to swing until she saw it was a ball and then able to hold up. That's the kind of approach you want at the plate. Rhea 
Maria Pell looking for her first base hit of the week. 0 for 1 Sunday against Puerto Rico. He's hit some big hits before at a three run shot in the provincial final. This team's journey here to the Little League World Series. A 3 1. That one ground ball to third, and an easy step on the base by Kaylee Glenn. She has been a lockdown player at the hot corner. Glenn with another put out. No score. Hey, everybody, this is Michael Kay, but I want to talk to one person. That's Danny Katansky. She's on the Connecticut team in the Little League Softball World Series. And I know you want to be a major league broadcaster. So please work hard and then join me in the booth because there's some people I will move aside just so you could be there and we could both scream together, see ya. That is awesome from Michael K. And Danny Katansky is going to be due up fourth here in this order. Well, how cool to be able to have those kinds of goals. I didn't know that being able to wear a headset and call games was even a possibility when I was playing Little League softball and going to the World Series back then in Kalamazoo, Michigan. But to be able to have a shout-out from Michael K., you've got to be kidding me. That's pretty cool. That is awesome. Marina Cosmas at the play, and you just get the feel now, and it's... I don't know if it's an obvious statement to make, but what is enough here? It, it, one run with how these pitchers are pitching, cross the plate once, and you have a great shot of avoiding elimination here. That one fouled out of play, one and one. On well, these two teams playing to extend their stay here in North Carolina, they do not want to go home, and this is a win or go home situation. Foul ball here. And for this team, this team might need to start thinking about bringing out the, the old lucky bat. It's a bat they named Rose in honor of the movie Titanic, Jenny Dalton Hill. It's a, it's a convoluted story, but one I think is worth telling. Yeah, this team wanted, had never seen the movie Titanic, hadn't been able to. And so there's the lucky bat, <laughs> also known as Rose. It has its own spot in the lineup. It looks like they're taking very good care of it back at the dorms. has its own little pillow and blanket to be comfortable. But when it comes to the Titanic movie, none of them had seen it. and They really wanted to. Grace Weber was talking about it all the time. Cosmos with the leadoff. And again, this they're all in on this. They are all in on this. They've got some necklaces. There's the, the necklace, the heart of the heart ocean. Of the, they found it. I thought for, it was lost forever. But obviously, I thought she dropped it into the ocean, but obviously. It was lost. It, it's been 84 years. <laughs> off walk here for, for Cosmos. So they finally watched Titanic. They did. After they won state or regionals, they were able to watch Titanic. Everyone's been able to see it. But uh, pretty cool moment. They have Rose in the dugout. It's time to everybody use some of that Rose luck. Rose is well rested. She's had a good night's sleep, and it's time for her to start helping this team swing the bats. They bought matching Titanic bracelets and shirts. Where did the bat come from? They just found it. It was they, it was an unclaimed bat at the end of practice one day, and Coach was walking around saying, is this your bat? Is this your bat? Nobody claimed it, so it kind of just got put in the bag and then randomly got named Rose and has become the lucky bat. Inside. Somewhere there's a young little leaguer who left the bat at the complex watching TV going, <laughs> they're named my bat Rose. <laughs> And, sh and she's saying, I'll never let go. <laughs> <laughs> that one, little slow roller. Can't let it go foul. It tried to. But, and now we might have some obstruction or interference. What do we have there at second base? As Cosmos was rounding second base, she didn't continue to go to third. 
And now the umpires are going to discuss this. Well, here's the problem with it, Matt. She didn't try right. to advance. Right. If, if there is any kind of inter interaction between a fielder and a base runner, you have to keep trying to advance to the next base. You are protected between those two bases in that situation. The umpire at second base did see that collision, so Pavel Kasparak has, was able to see that. He called it, but she didn't try to advance, so she's just a second. This one inside, and yeah, it's a it's a tough thing for a player. You just need to be coached to, and you could see Coach Glenn saying, I, I need you here. When you run into that player, come here, watch me. And sometimes the coach is watching for the call to make sure it's been called so you don't get thrown out when you're advancing at your own risk. This one foul. Well, and in a situation like that, if you're protected between second and third, go for it. Put the put the play in motion because even if you're thrown out by a mile, right. you're going to get back to second base and be given it because of that interaction that was ha that happened. In there for a strike. And it's not a judgment call, right, for the umpire to say, well, you wouldn't have made it anyway. That's for an extra base. Correct. Perhaps if she was going to round third well, and then come home. They actually, if she gets thrown out at first base, they can judge whether she would have made it. This one back to High Brink looking for the double play, but too quick of a play. And a big first step. So sometimes, even if you are thrown out by a ton, they will award you that additional base because of how flagrant the contact was made in the baseline. Both of the players fell down, which would have prevented any kind of advancement, but get up and run and see if you can make it. Here's Danny Katansky. The next you. Wants to, wants to be a Major League Baseball broadcaster. You heard the well wishes from Michael Kay. He loves listening to Michael Kay on those Yankee games. Fouls that one back. A huge Yankee fan wants to meet Derek Jeter. But maybe the coolest part about Danny Katansky's story is she's a hockey player, plays on the Wonderland Wizards the team in Bridgeport. Just a really tough athlete. The 0-2 to Katansky. That one is high. She was in a slump once, missing some outside pitches, getting under the ball. She watched Anthony Volpe, the... Young player for the Yankees. Mimicked his stance and helped get out of the slot. Maybe she used it there. That one goes under the glove. And rounding third. Cosmos for the first run of the game. Now we got action on the base pass. Runner stuck between second and third. Safe in there. Riley Vega Davis got under that tag. That was a close, close call. And Coach Brian Glenn tried to give her some coaching there. They escaped. An out at third, but they do get that all-important first run home. Well, and putting the ball in play is what it's about. It squeaks under the glove of the shortstop, Bergen. She can't get there, and because of that, third base coach Brian Glenn, keeping his runners in motion, sends the runner home, puts the first run on the board, and then look at this aggressive base running. The tag is applied so high that the foot is able to get in under the slide, or under the tag. She's at third, so now... The heart of the ocean seems to be doing a trick. <laughs> Coach Danilak, in the circle with Canada. Right. 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 Okay. okay, let's go take care of the ball. Here we go. No, I can't. <laughs> 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 no, okay. no, All right, here we go. Lead us a cheer there, Leah. Here we go. Okay, Canada, one, two, one, two. Canada, let's go. I love a coach who's able to keep it light, even in these big time moments. Just be where her feet are. Great interaction between Heather Danilak and her infield. So one run already home here for Connecticut. Danny Katansky coming through. Fly ball down the right field line, Glenn. And perhaps that was a good thing that the right fielder, Danilak, was unable to make that play. Because a tag-up situation was certainly in play there at third. Well, and over at third, Riley Fagan Davis was ready to tag up, seeing that that ball was heading foul. She did the right thing by going back to third base to tag up. And with less than one out, your job is to read it off the bat. If it goes up, get back. If it's down, get ready to advance. Glenn swings through that one, two strikes. That ball angle reads are so important off third base. Matt, you and I were talking about drills you can do 
with a team before you go into competition. That's a really good one. Just read ball angle. And that one is foul. Now Glenn gets a conversation with that. The box, don't take your eyes off her. She wants to quick picture. Good. So put your foot down, stare at her. It's one out. Ground ball anywhere gets a run. Just put the bat on the ball. Go. Good information by the head coach to his daughter to be able to say, hey, she's trying to quick pitch you. So when you step in the box, she's ready to go. Keep your eyes on her. Be ready to hit. She's ready. The 0-2 to Glenn. In the oh. hitter. Bases are now loaded for Connecticut. From a quick pitch to a hit pitch. And now, Holly Kuhn with a chance to add some valuable insurance runs here in the fifth. favorite movie Sandlot as well so instead of being the Sultan of Swat can we call her the Queen of Crush she's she's still looking for her first hit here in the World Series but right now would be a pretty pivotal moment to be able to put the ball in play and yeah, the game-winning run batted in to win states this season for the team that went inside 2 and oh now one for Hydebrink she's been throwing the ball up in the zone getting some swing and misses, but now she's trying to really jam up these hitters and prevent the ball to the outfield. There's that up pitch that has been very successful for her. I would expect that she would go right back to it. That is a pitch that is so hard to catch up to as a hitter. Two and one here to Koo. Koo pops this one up behind the backstop. Campbell unable to get to that one. Two strikes now. Not a big pitch up coming from Hybrid. Elimination game between Connecticut and Canada. Connecticut from Milford, Connecticut. One and one this week. A win on Sunday, a loss last night. They're up here in the fifth. That one is laser to left field. That one is down. Riley Fagan Davis scores. Bases remain loaded. There's your insurance run. And a pump of the fist from Coach Glenn. Big moment to come through for Holly Kuhn. Her first hit in the World Series. Not only is it a big one with bases loaded, but it's an RBI, an insurance run in such a tight game. What a way to put the bat ball in play. Punches it to the left side of the field. An easy stand-up run. Everybody's safe, and this inning seems to be getting away from Canada. Leave it in the zone. What? Addie McKenna Hansen now with the bases loaded. Swings through that one. 0 oh 1. That was a big RPI single for Coon. And down here in this part of the lineup, she's got a ton of power. What a great spot to have her up in with bases loaded. Hattie McKenna Hansen, because her family has a cat that only has three legs. They adopted her as a kit, and no one realized it initially. She had three legs. They call her tripod. I mean, if there's a more perfect name, I don't know what it would be. Trace, maybe? That cat is full of sadness every time her name is called. <laughs> now to the plate, bases loaded again for Emma Bonanno. Hydebrink trying to keep the damage at a minimum. Two runs already on the board here in the fifth. Glenn at third, telling Bonanno to just keep that front shoulder in. Just opening up and 
Shortening that bat. That one is a wild pitch. Comes right back to Campbell, though. All the runners will hold. Well, that's a good read on the bases, knowing that that one punched right back to the catcher. You're not going to have time to come back to it. So really good job of just staying over there on the bag. Two strikes now to Bonanno. Fouls that one back. Uh, it's that rise ball going up in the zone. That's the spot that Connecticut has been vulnerable at, but getting a piece of it, keeping this at bat alive. And his older sister Maddie was part of this World Series team from Milford a season ago. Younger sister trying to come through, fouls it away. Yeah, she sat in the stands and watched this event last year as a fan and said, I want to be there next year. And that's exactly what happened. Worked her way into this position with this team. Bases loaded for Emma Bonanno, trying to add more insurance here in the fifth. Inside, two and two. I appreciate trying to jam up a big hitter like Bonanno, who has shown some really good swings on those balls up in the zone. But keeping it in over the plate is so important. You don't want to hit a batter here. That one is flied to right. Danilak under and makes the catch. Gets the big hug. But Connecticut with a couple of big runs. 2 nothing over Canada as the bats come through. Able to punch it through, put two on the board. They've got the advantage. Connecticut, can they hold on for the win? Who win contest eating the most poutine? Oh, me. I don't like poutine. Or I've never tried it, actually. So poutine is fries, gravy, and cheese curds. And I like it because it just it's good together. Like, it just tastes good. I think poutine is a mess on a plate, personally. Never judge a book by its cover, Abigail. <laughs> <laughs> Don't judge a book by its cover, Abigail. I like that from <laughs> Zeta Campbell. Poutine, which emerged in Quebec in the late 1950s. And have cheese curds, French fries, and gravy. I mean, sign me up eight days a week. I'll be in that eating contest. I don't know, though. I mean, for Abigail, she moved to Canada after living at in Louisiana, mom's job transferred them up there, and I'm going to say there's quite a few more things in gumbo than there is in poutine. You got the gumbo eating contest and the poutine eating contest. I'd go to both. Say <laughs> to Campbell, leading things off here with her poutine hating teammate Heidbrink on deck. That went down the right field line and just foul. Well, Canada down to their final six outs here. Start counting outs at this point. After nine runs in the loss to Puerto Rico. Still looking for their first run today. That one down the left field line, excuse me, under the third baseman's glove, Glenn, and a big leadoff single for Campbell. She well, went down the right field line for the foul ball and goes down left. Well, and what is it about this Canadian team that says our bats will come alive when people score on us? We saw the big seven spot put up against Puerto Rico, and then the bats came alive. They were able to put nine runs on the board, but it wasn't enough to get the win. Now with two runs on the board, the bats come alive again for Canada. Heidbrink first pitch swinging. This was the deep left center field, ranging over to make the catch over the shoulder. Addie McKenna Hansen. That looked like something that might go over her head. Not sure if she lost it or just took a bad angle, but you know what? When you're 
When you're tall, you can make up for it. Yeah, those extra inches in height definitely helped her there because that ball looked like it was going to sail over her head. But look oh. at the last little reach, grabs the out. A little happiness for by Riley, <laughs> Riley Fagan Davis. And uh, back behind the plate, Marina Combs. Cosmos knows, yeah, that, that was a big out right there. Grace Weber in the circle. You can see her reaction. Oh, don't stress me out like that. Please <laughs> catch it properly. Leo Caruto. Now at the plate throw back. Good throw back there for Cosmos. Got to like a little back pick. My favorite part of that play was the coverage over there by Sammy Marini out there in right to make sure that that ball, if it got by, it wasn't going to do too much damage. Catcher trying to throw out a catcher there. Squaring, puts that one down. That's a good bunt there from Caruto. Second baseman covering in there. What a great bunt by Cleo Caruto. Gets the hug from the first base coach. And now the tying run on base. I think Coach Glenn's going to have a conversation here and just See how close it was. Say, hey, we, we might challenge this one. And it was a bang-bang play, and I think it's close enough to challenge. I think it's a great challenge, especially in this situation. It's hard to see in real time, but a good heads-up defensive play to keep the runner honest over there at first base. They kept Zeta Campbell on first. I think that's a good call. He saw that correctly in real time. I was torn not knowing what it was, but first base umpire Robert Freeman doing a good job making that call. But it is one worth challenging because it, it makes a huge difference for Connecticut if they are able to keep this runner on first base. That's the tying run in this ballgame. Take a look at it again. Yeah, that's going to that's going to stand or be confirmed, however they want to term it. Yeah, every every conference kind of has it their own verbiage for that. I don't know what it's supposed to be confirmed or upheld. Either one. Impressed with these umpires this week. They've done such a good job of controlling the game, keeping pace of play, moving along really good calls and handling it without any ego these umpires volunteer their time but they are such good umpires for the game and this play will stand for Connecticut the fans will react the Canadian ones especially Good speed down the line from Caruto, who put down that bunt. Yeah, that play made, is made possible by Caruto down the line. So Cleo Caruto on first, Zeta Campbell on second, and Emma Fukushima showing bunt. That one is dropped. First baseman throws back. And she is saying back to back infield bunt singles, and the bases are now loaded. How about the pressure that Canada is putting on Connecticut? Short game coming up big. If the big hits aren't going to come, go ahead and just square, drag bunt, put yourself in a position to use your wheels down the line. Great job putting another drag bunt back in the middle of the field and letting the defenders have some issues with the short game. Yeah, Grace coming. Looking for her first hit of the week. 0 for 1 today. She's swinging, but she pops it right out. Catch your pitcher. And it is grabbed by Cosmos. For a big second out here in the fifth inning. So much pressure on this defense right now, and especially on the pitcher in the circle. Grace Weber, bases loaded, two outs, tying run on second base. So much going on. Paige Hipkin stands in the box. Bases loaded. In there for a strike, 0-1. Most improved player on this roster. 
a competitor in the box and makes all the difference in this ball game. Ground ball, a hitter. And our runner's going to score. You mentioned it, just being careful not to hit the batter. And that one was kind of a one-hopper into the foot. Well, and I appreciate wanting to jam up a hitter because it's hard to get a barrel through when you're thrown with some velocity. But when that screwball gets away from you, you run the risk of hitting the batter, and that's what happened. We've seen it a couple of times in this game. That one is a huge one, though, as it puts Canada within one run. Two to one now. You hit the 10-hole hitter, and now the 11-hole, Ryan Bazendowski day comes to the plate. They're making sure that Hipkin can run. Four outs at every base. A big two-out rally here for Canada. That one misses, 1-0. Oh. Tying run at third. Elimination game here in Greenville. Loser is going home. Winner survives another day. That one goes to the backstop. Comes right back to the pitcher, though. Good read there, but runner in third, Corota. But 2-0 and oh now, and you've got to find the strike zone here if you're Weber. Oh, that one was high in the zone. A swing and a miss, 2-1. and one. And I get it. That ball up in the zone looks big, and in a 2-0 count, I'd be swinging out of my shoes, too. But you've got to show plate discipline and make this ball be close to the plate to be able to do some damage. Weber, 2-1. That one is low. 3-1. and one. Tying run at third. We're in the fifth inning. Ryan Bassendowski Day. That one a little bit up in the zone. Swings and fouls it off three and two. I think Weber knows what she likes. Perhaps the biggest pitch of this ball game right here. Runners will be going three and two with two outs. Canada at the plate, down a run. That one is up in the zone, and it's ball four, and we're tied in Greenville. Ryan Bazandowski Day had swung at two pitches very similar to that and fouled them off. She lays off this one. And it's ball four. It definitely is. Look at the plate discipline to not swing at that pitch again. Huge moment. And I like the leadership being shown by the catcher, Marina Cosmos, to come out and bring everyone together before her head coach walks out to the circle. Listen to the coach. No, no, no. I thought you said it was off the plate. He said it was. Oh. It was Hey, they look good to me. But, girls, we can't. Hey, we don't leave in the past, do we? What do we need right now? We need one out. Give me one out. Knock it down. Knock everything down. Make a play somewhere. Got it? Let's go. New England on three. One, two, three. New England. Hey. When that ball was high, it's hard to tell in terms of inside, outside from the dugout where that pitch was. And she's right. It was down the middle, but that pitch a little too high to be called a strike. Coach Glenn not liking the call, but... Cannot live in the past, as he says. So now you got the 12-hole hitter, Reese Burtz, at the plate. And what's great for Canada now is you've gone through the lineup. You've tied this game up. The top of the order is coming up. And you're going to go into the sixth inning at least tied. They hope they have the lead. Burtz could be a hero here. Swings through that one, one and one. Reese Burtz. Small but mighty. Chance to deliver the big blow. One and two. Yeah, 
good response by Weber in the circle. Frustrated with that last batter that she gave up the walk to. She's going right at Burt. Burt swings through that one for a big strikeout. The bases are left loaded, but Canada gets two very important runs to tie up this game. With their back against the wall, Connecticut responds in a huge way by getting the strikeout. Huge pitch in a pressure-filled moment, and the score is all even at two. This is the Little League Softball World Series presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Elm Street Park, Stallings Stadium. Awesome to see these young girls compete, and we're going to be able to see the professionals compete as well. History is going to be made this year as the professional softball games come to Greenville, North Carolina. First ever athletes unlimited programs at the Little League Softball World Series. That's coming up tomorrow on Wednesday. Learn more at littleleague.org slash athletes unlimited. They've been here today watching these young athletes providing some words of encouragement. Some letters of praise. And here watching a really good game. <laughs> Tied at two as Hydebrink misses the strike zone both times. Well, and there's so many emotions flowing on both sides of the ball right now, knowing that there's just three outs left for both sides to be able to play to run and get a win as this is an elimination game. One of these teams is going home at the completion of this one. Grace Weber. Doing a good job in the circle today for New England and Connecticut swings at ball three. Now we're two and two. I love the different questions on the questionnaire for these young ladies. Hey, Matt, you want to hear a joke about pizza? Nah, it's too cheesy. <laughs> Fun joke. I should have said that. <laughs> Inside for a ball, three and two. A lot of good jokes. Yeah, these she, girls know. She wants to be a She's a comedian on this team. And she's always cracking jokes, always keeping things light. How about a leadoff walk? Jokes on Canada. Leadoff walk for Connecticut now. And the go ahead run is in on first here in the sixth inning as the 11 hole hitter, Audrey O'Connell, comes to the plate. 10, 11, and 12 here to lead off this sixth inning. O'Connell looks to square. She does. Hydrings only plays the first covering there. It's Perotto. And now the go ahead run in scoring position. Well, I like that move by the coach for Connecticut, knowing that this is a one run ball game. If you can push one across and just hold on, you've got the win to advance. Got to think the bunts on the table again here, right? Most definitely. Maya Brown. No, oh, she's swinging. 12 hole here, Maya Brown. She's been working on her hitting. Ground ball this way, wait. And with that instruction, there's no bunting here. No, definitely not. And Maya Brown wears the number three here at the World Series, but typically wears number 27 in honor of her dad. So a special number definitely for their family. 2-1 now to the 12 hole here, Maya Brown. Originally from Poland, born in Poland. Credit softball with teaching her some life lessons. Ground ball to the pitcher. Hyde Brick's going to get that second out at first. And up with it, Becker just quickly off of first base, popping off to make sure that runner Weber goes nowhere. Two down. Well, cat like reflexes in the circle, able to come away with a really nice backhand defensive move and a strong throw over to first base. 
love the way that she is defending the circle and protecting this ball game. <laughs> Muscles, love that. Canada is going to talk about things in the circle, and you hear the instructions here from Coach Glenn at third. We love you. You're the greatest. You're complete. That's your parents sometimes, but or to PJ. But to me, I love you. I love you. Everyone else doesn't love you. I love you. Okay? Hey, go fun. Go get it. Go get it. Love those positive words. The last thing she hears before she steps into the box. One of the coolest things you can do as a coach is just build up your players in a moment when they might have some angst, some concern, some anxiety creeping in. 0 for 2 today. Two hits on the week. Three looks at strike one. And remember, this battery is calling their own game. The pitches are not coming from the dugout. So it is all up to Zeta Campbell and Abigail Hydebrink. Maya Brown is your pinch runner at third. She's coming home. Hydebrink throws home! And she scores the go-ahead run. And heading to second base is Marini. Maya Brown was the courtesy runner, the slow dribbler to the pitcher, Hybrink, who clearly didn't think she had a play at first, comes home with two outs. And I think she did have the play at first, but sometimes when you see that runner coming home, it gets into your head. It's one of those things where you have to think about it before the play happens. With two outs, all she needed to do was throw to first base. We know that she's got a rocket of an overhand throw, and she just allowed the emotion of the moment to get to her as she threw home instead of going to first and ending the inning. Sometimes in the moment, things happen very quickly, and you know that go-ahead run is at third. Slow dribbler, you see the runner going, and you maybe a blackout a little bit. Where do I go with the ball? I'm going home. Maybe you forget there's two outs, and just a, a tough, tough moment for Canada. As the regional champs of New England have a 3-2 to two lead, and now a chance to add to that. Cosmos, that sounded like it hit her. She's not it, acting like it did. I think it ricocheted off the, the shin guard of the catcher, Zeta Campbell. Runner advances another 60 feet, so we've got Marini now at third. Yeah, ball in the dirt. Yep. Yeah, definitely kicked off the shin guard of the, of the umpire, not even off of Campbell. Now Marina Cosmos, chance to add a fourth run for Connecticut. That one inside, 3-0, and oh, and... You wonder after that last play if it's kind of rattled high break a little bit in the circle. And the hard part is you can't go back to the circle without taking out high break. Fly ball, that'll fall. Foul, three and one. Yeah, they've already had a visit to the circle in this inning, and so another visit to the circle would require a pitching change. So all you can do is shout encouragement from the dugout to try to give a little bit of relief to your pitcher in the circle who has thrown such a gem of a game. A walk for Cosmos. She'll be in motion next pitch. And Cosmos has had a walk in every plate appearance here today. And since Cosmos is the catcher, they're going to bring out a courtesy runner for her, and this should be the last batted out, which would be, I believe, Maya Brown. Correct. So Maya Brown might be able to score a couple of runs here this inning. And she was the courtesy runner that played the go-ahead run. A 3-2 to two lead here for Connecticut.
So there's Maya Brown. The courtesy runner again at first. And you've got Marini at third. Runner goes, the throw down, and now another run's going to score. They throw it down, and now everybody's safe, and another run scores. Two runs have come in, an insurance run, it's four to two. You knew Brown was going to be running from first. She draws the throw. The run scores before they can even consider getting it out, and that is huge. I think I would have allowed that runner to advance over to second base and then just try to let my defense play. They've got great defenders. They've got a great pitcher in the circle. That one right back to High Brink, who catches the ball and throws it down out of frustration. Tough inning for Canada. Two runs come in for Connecticut. They will go to the bottom of the inning trying to close this one out. The Little League Softball World Series on ESPN is presented by Dick's Sporting Goods. Every season starts at Dick's. You want your child to experience the teamwork and fun of Little League baseball or softball? Play littleleague.org. Enter your address to find a Little League community program near you. Oh, what a rough half inning for Team Canada. Looked like they were going to get out of it. Give up a couple of runs. They haven't won a World Series game since 2018. Nine consecutive losses. And in order to keep it from becoming ten, they're going to have to score at least two runs here in the sixth. They're in a really good spot, though, Matt, as they have flipped the lineup over back to the top. They start with one, two, three, two, three of their best hitters. Ray Bergen has been on base once today. She leads things off for Canada. Fouls that one back. Canada team that hasn't been home in a few weeks. They were in Vancouver right after their Alberta playdowns. Went into Vancouver, British Columbia, at the end of July. It came straight from there to right here in Greenville. And we're hoping for a much longer stay than it could be if they don't score two runs. Off speed, Bergen has sized that one up, kept the weight back, goes off the toes of Fagan Davis in center field, but a leadoff single for Rhea Bergen. Good piece of hit. Well, and you asked earlier, Matt, how do you hit a changeup? That right there is pretty textbook. She allowed herself to sink down into her legs, keep the barrel back, and then drive the ball right back up the middle. Didn't try to do too much with it. A simple base hit starts this inning off with a little dab and a hit and a base runner. Allie Danilik now. See if the bunt's in play. She does square. She puts it down, and it goes foul. Danilak has squared to bunt, I think, more than any other player in the tournament. She has used short game a ton. And you're, and you're not bunting to sacrifice. You're bunting to get on base here, down two, with the runner at first. They are playing in. She pulls it back. It gets right to the pitcher. It throws it to second for one. Not in time. The second base umpire making the call that the fielder was off the base, it appeared. And we'll see if they challenge that call. That appeared to be out on a bang-bang play as Weber threw to second base. Yeah, and if you remember, the... It doesn't require a tag, and with these bases that are breakaway, it's hard to tell sometimes when the runners slide in, but that right mm, foot does look wide of call. the bag. That's a great call by second base umpire Pavel Kasparik. And yeah, they're going to challenge this call. That, that looked like an out from here, but it looks like this should stand. Yeah, with his angle back there, he was in the perfect spot to see the footwork of the shortstop. Holly Kuhn coming over to cover the bag. Yeah, you had the corners playing in on the bunt. She hits it right back to the pitcher. And the question is, is there enough to overturn the call? I don't know. I, I think that angle is going to be hard because it looks as though there might be contact with the bag, but you don't know. I don't know that we have another look of it, though, because our first base camera would have had responsibility of a different position. So 
Good job by the second base umpire to see that in real time. In this review, it appears as though the ball gets the back of the glove before the foot hits the base. But the question is, is the fielder's foot on the base? Well, and it all comes down to defensive positioning, too. In this situation, you, be, you should be covering second base almost like a first baseman in front of the bag with a little bit of a stretch. It's hard to get there in time to make that happen, but you should always move through the front of the bag rather than the back of the bag when the throw's coming from the inside part of the field. If it's coming from the outfield, you cover the back of the bag. From the infield side or a pitcher, you got to cover the inside part of the bag. This might be the kind of call that whatever was called on the field is going to be the call that stands. If he had called her out, there's no way to tell if the foot was off the bag. Yeah, this one's going to be hard to change knowing that our camera angles weren't able to pick up a different look, and so it's the call on the field was probably the best look of any. And Canada is going to be in business. A single and a fielder's choice. And now the three-hole hitter, Megan Becker, represents the winning run here in the sixth inning. Tying run on base, winning run at the plate. Elimination game here at the Little League World Series. Becker swings in her eyes, 0-1. It's in these moments when you know you have to put the ball in play that you have to take a deep breath and recenter yourself and focus yourself down in the zone, knowing that the top of the zone has been a vulnerable spot. Way high. Think about Canada. They've done all their damage in the late innings. Nine runs yesterday in the final three innings. Two runs so far in the final three innings here. Two in the fifth, trying to add more in the sixth. Becker fouls that one back. Well, it's just crazy that this Canada team doesn't score runs until after scored upon. Big moments, big time hits. They came up short yes, against Puerto Rico. Are they going to be able to score enough here with no outs and runners at first and second? Becker. That ground ball gets by the catcher, runner goes, throw to third in there. Wisely holding the runner at third, and now the tying run is at second base. Outfield cut four! Outfield cut four! And that's a wild pitch to advance both runners. A base hit could tie this up. Becker to third. We're going home, and now the runner's going to dive back into third, and she's in there, and the bases are loaded. Really smart base running by Bergen. And she's a little bit nicked up there on the play. Well, I was worried when she took off on this, and she was going to be out at home. She put the brakes on quickly, knowing her mistake, and then able to come back, get to third, recoup, and no damage done. Tough situation. That's the right play. But if you wouldn't have gotten one, they would have scored. Bring it in, we go one. Yeah. Got it? No. I mean, we're going four. We're going four. Bring it in and go four. Hey, you should have went to one there, right? Up by two, right? Now we got to fight. Now we got to fight. It's okay. Right now, get the ground ball, go home to four. Got it? Careful on any secondary plays. Let's go. We are! Oh my God, we are! Let's go. Love that the defenders were in touch with what he was saying. He said, go one. They said, what? <laughs> oh, wait, go they four. They said, no. no. <laughs> and it's not, a, it's not a home to four. It's a home to one. If you can get a double play here, that helps you out, making sure that defensively you're all set to go. Pretty loose in the box, though, for Aaliyah Riopelle. Four to two, Canada down. Reappel, first pitch, swinging fouls that one away. You good with infield in when it's not the tying run at third? What do you feel the strategy? 
Well, it gives them a better chance to get an out. With and, a, and maybe turn two. Correct. If you can turn two in this situation, you help yourself by just being one out away from winning the ball game. But what it does as a defender, when you're pulled in, you have less lateral move, less lateral distance you can cover. Rhea Pell, that one's in the dirt. Good stop there by Cosmas. It's going to require Grace Weber, though, to be right on point and hit her spot. You've got to take a deep breath in this moment. Fill the zone. Trust your defense. Go ahead, hit your corners. Use that rise ball again. Rhea Pell fouls that one off the mask. Now one and two. Nobody out. Bases loaded. Canada needs to score at least two to extend. Elimination game at the Little League World Series. Rhea Pell, that is through the hole on the left side. One run comes home. Danilak is going to be held at third. It's a four to three game. Huge base hit by Aaliyah Riappel. That is a hard shot, 5-6 hole, and with the infield in, there is no chance for those middle infielders or even the third baseman to be able to come up with that. Even with the distance of Kaylee Glynn off of third base, she can't get to it. Canada, great response in this one. And now just a run away from tying it up. That is the one instance of the one repercussion of having your infield in. You have no shot of making that play if it's not hit right to you. And now, nobody out. Tying run at third. Winning run at second. Bases loaded for Zeta Campbell. Campbell, who already has a base hit today. She can be the hero for Canada. Campbell. That one's out of play. Well, Matt, you know what I'm looking at on that situation is with the ball up in the air, the runner at third base, and Ali Danilak is back and tagging up, knowing that that opportunity is available to her with the ball up in the zone. Danilak at third, Becker at second, Riappel at first. And now the play is certainly at home with the tying run at third. Campbell can be the hero with a base hit. Inside, one and one. Infield is in, plays the home. Campbell swings and misses, one and two. Well, there's no need for Canada to put pressure on themselves right here with nobody out. They've got a bunch of bats that can come to the plate, and Connecticut's defense still pulled in. Big pitch here for Weber. Tying run at third for Canada. Canada fouls that one off. A delayed delivery from Weber as she was looking over to the dugout for the sign. Campbell hung in there. And now faces a 1-2 count. Back to the pitcher. Plays to home. There it is. And obviously no play at first for the double play as the first baseman Bonanno had been crashing in playing in the, with the force play at home one out tying run remains at third Becker now at third reappell at second Campbell at first Abigail Heidbrink pitcher for Canada today Chance to give herself and Canada the win here. That one is high. Good grab there from Cosmos.
Heidbrink can be the hero with a base hit. Lays off that one, 2-0. And that defense still pulled in. So recognize that they are inside the baseline. A hard shot on the ground can find its way to the grass. But defense hoping to go home and save the run. That one is high. 3-0 now. And this has got to be take city here for... Abigail Heidbrick, I know you're a big hitter. No, this is take all this the way. This is take city. Here we go. 3-0 and oh to Heidbrick. Ball four and we're tied. Big moment in, the, in this game right now. There are so many emotions going on. And for Connecticut, there's already been a visit to the circle. There is no one warming in the pen. It is up to them to figure out this puzzle and get out of this situation. Cleo Corrado, the winning run now, 60 feet away. Canada has not won a World Series game since 2018. Corrado first pitch swinging, 0-1. So hard to lay off that pitch up in the zone, but with a walk that happened right before, I would let that first one go. I would wait for a strike, but now a strike on her. She needs to stay focused down in the zone. We are tied at four. Elimination game at the Little League Softball World Series. Canada trying to walk it off. Swing and a miss, another one out of the zone. And my message to my hitters at this point was, let's take until we get a strike, knowing that the emotion in the circle is causing Weber to overthrow just a little bit. Big pitch from Grace Weber. The 0-2. Corrodo fouls it away. Very good attack on that pitch. Enter the inning down four to two. They scored two. One more walks it off for Canada. The 0-2 to Corrado. Weber steps off. Roto back to Weber. Comes home for the out. Back-to-back -back four Souths at the plate. The tying run, the go-ahead and winning run remains at third. Now Zeta Campbell is 60 feet away for Canada. Emma Fukushima can be the hero. If Grace Weber and Connecticut can get out of this, my goodness. Fukushima, back to second. The throw, oh, got her. O'Connell makes the throw, gets the assist, and some way, somehow, Connecticut survives to the seventh inning. Connecticut able to come away with that third out before the go-ahead run, the walk-off win, but emotion is really going to play into this one as we go to the top of the seventh. Canada needed two runs to tie. They sent eight to the plate. Clear Riapel tied it with a single, and then Hydebrink with the anticlimactic RBI walk. Well, and it tied this game. Both of these teams playing in an elimination game, recognizing that it's win or go home. None of them wanted to be 0-2 and barbecue. Well, technically, Connecticut would be 1-2 and, and bar bar still barbecue. <laughs> it's, you're still barbecue. <laughs> still Aren't we time. all going to barbecue <laughs> eventually? Some kids are. You know what? Just wake me when it's over. Okay. Tied at four. We're in extras. Go get the cone ice. Here. Just go get it. It's over there in right field. I want pineapple sunrise. Tied at four here as we go to extra innings. Connecticut scored two in the fifth. Canada responded with two in the fifth. 
Connecticut scored two in the six. Canada responded with two in the six. Canada has just been the, the team you can't beat. They're not dead yet. And for Canada, we do have a new pitcher as Aliyah Riapel comes into the circle. And on Sunday in that loss to Puerto Rico, she was unable to record it out and gave up five earned runs. And not only do they change the pitcher, they also change their catcher in putting Rhea Bergen back there behind the dish. Rhea Bergen, really good athlete. Going to be at catcher instead of Zeta Campbell. Zeta Campbell is now over at third. And Heidrink is now at shortstop. Riley Fagan Davis. Check that. Emily Sparingo at the plate here for Connecticut. One of the players from last year's team that made it here fouls that one back one and two. And we've seen emotion play a big part of this Connecticut lineups. Kind of miscues this weekend as they had some emotion last night. Seven errors committed in that loss to New York. My goal for each of them in this game here today is to just stay mentally solid, not worry about the score, just come out and execute. There were a lot of things going on that last half inning, but to be able to flush it and move forward, such an important part of the game. 2-2 two, two to Springo. Ryan Bazadowski Day is now in left field. Moving over from right. That one is low. Three and two. Connecticut was able to draw a leadoff walk in the six, which led to two runs. Springo, ball away from a leadoff walk here in extras. Big pitch for Riapel. That one is low in the leadoff walk for Connecticut. Well, Matt, you mentioned the leadoff walk in the sixth that gave them the lead, but they also had a leadoff walk in the fifth that started the scoring. So it comes down to that leadoff walk. Is Canada going to be able to keep that one on the base pass? Katansky, who had a big hit in the fifth, driving in a run. Danny Katansky. That one's in the dirt, 2 and 0. And Leah Riapel, who struggled on Sunday, now back in the struggle zone a little bit, trying to find the strike zone. 2 0. That one is low, 3 and 0. I like the fact that Coach Danilak wanted to put Riapel back in the circle to try to get her a little redemption, but so far struggling to find the zone consistently. That one is high, and now back-to-back -back walks in the elimination game. And you wonder how soon they go back to high break. Well, Matt, that's the conversation you and I actually had in the last show outing by Rhea Pelt. What, when is the, when is the hook going to come? And right now, with runners at first and second, she's still out there. Kaylee Glenn now at the play. Rhea Pell finds the zone, 0-1. Nice response, ball right down the heart of the plate. That's exactly what she needs to do, let her defense play. Go ahead, run at second base for Connecticut. Yeah. Off speed, 1-1. One and, one. and the hard part about changing your catcher, too, is this is a new catcher that doesn't know the strike zone that's being called back behind the plate. 
right back to the pitcher. Reappel off her glove. No one can make a play. And the bases are now loaded. Went in and out of the glove of Reappel. That'll be a base hit. And now the go ahead around 60 feet away and nobody out. And it is a hard shot right back at Reappel in the circle. Does a good job of knocking it down because had that ball made it all the way to the grass, that would have been a run right away. But now you're right, Matt, just 60 feet away from the go ahead run. Oh, first pitch swinging. Becker makes the catch for the first out of the inning. And the gamesmanship in this one with a pitcher who has struggled to find the zone. A lot of free swinging in the first pitch of these at bats. Eddie McKenna Hansen. That one is hot. Kenna Hansen with a couple of hits this week. There's Coach Glenn at third. At, ready? Give me four or five. That one is high, 2-0. Oh. Well, and the conversation that needs to be happening over there at third base is, hey, ball angle reads on this. A ball up, I need you back and tagging. There's only go one out. Red, go red. Ground ball. In the dirt now. And it is 3-0. and oh. And it sounds like Coach Glenn wants her to hold the bat out there and See if we can cause something. I misread the sign. In there for a strike. I think that was the take sign. That one is launched in the center field. Springo scores. Katansky rounding third. She will score as she slides into the catcher, Bergen. Two from home. Connecticut plates two runs. Addie McKenna Hansen drives in a pair. Connecticut has the lead. And with a ball to the outfield, it absolutely was the perfect place to put this ball because she's got runners able to just tear it up, use their wheels around the bases. And when you've got a hockey player coming in on the slide, she's not afraid of a little contact. She's the second run in this inning. Let it all up. Okay, we got our runners on second. We got our runners on third. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? We're going to take the ball. We're going to check them. And we're going to go to first. Okay? And then Megs is going to be on top, and she's going to get that girl out of home. That's going to be our extra play, if needed. Only if needed. My hand gets so sweaty. I can't even throw the ball. Grab some of that rosin. There you go. Okay, now wipe it off. Wipe it off. Okay, here we go. Okay, wipe it off. Now you got to wipe it off on your pants. Okay, here we go. Count it on so you lead it. You lead it. Let's go. So impressed with just the demeanor of Heather Danilak as she takes the circle. Very matter of fact. Not a lot of emotion. Doesn't let the moment get too big. Instills a lot of confidence in her players and just says, let's get the job done. Emma Bonanno, you saw her older sister play in this World Series a season ago. Squares, that one's foul. Canada going to have to score at least two to keep this one going in the seventh. We've seen them score two in each of the last two innings, but might have to score more. Two on. Just one out. That's a strike. Win at third. McKenna Hansen at second.
Three and two, one out. Emma Bonanno at the plate. Catboy's in there for a called strike three. Two down. Good response by Aaliyah Riapel in the circle. She did have a bunch of hiccups the last time she took the circle in the last game, but right now, more pressure. Takes that outside corner. That doesn't come off the shoulder of Bonanno. Nice out. Weather, first pitch swinging. Riapel, got to get that out at first and does. Two come home, could have been worse, but right now, Canada has some work to do. They need to score two runs. Find out next. That chick, Jenny Dalton Hill, we're in extras, Connecticut and Canada. A lot of drama here as Connecticut just scored two in the top of the seventh to take the lead. So much emotion, so many big moments in this game so far. We're in extra innings, a little free softball for everybody here at the ballpark. Elimination game, loser of this game is done. 9, 10, 11, due up in the lineup. Race coming. Leading things off. Again, that last inning, when Canada was at the bat, at the plate, they had bases loaded. The game was tied. They had already plated two runs. Bases loaded, one out. And Grace Weber was able to get out of that jam. And instead of Canada walking it off, Connecticut is now in a position to eliminate Canada here in the seventh. Grace versus Grace. The 0-2. And in this situation, as a leadoff batter, you can't be thinking home run or big, huge hit. It's about stringing base hits together to put the pressure on this defense that is pulled in inside the baseline. One, two. Well, Matt, I'm not quite sure why the middle infielders are pulled in in this situation. By being shallow on the infield, it takes away your ability to cover range from side to side and so with them pulled in a hard ground ball on the dirt has the potential to get through ground ball to win it right away or a hard ground ball right at you makes it look easy so good thing I'm not the one coaching this team You are needed up here in the booth. Well, thank you. Although you did regionals all by yourself. <laughs> there was a lot of mat chick in the <laughs> southeast region. You don't see scoreboards like this very often as Paige Hipkin right back to Weber. One away. Two in the fifth for each. Two in the sixth for each. Two in the seventh for Connecticut, and now, most importantly, the number two, two outs on the scoreboard as Canada is down to their final out. Ryan Bazandowski Day trying to extend this game, bring the tying run to the plate. First pitch swinging oh, off the glove of the third baseman Kuhn. Not going to be able to make a play. Should have been the final out of the game. Instead, the tying run comes to the plate. Just when you think one of these teams has the game locked in, another player comes through as a hero. Hard shot at the shortstop. It's an error as it's misplayed off the glove. Of Holly Coon. Now Reese Verts, who struck out a couple of times today. Trying to keep this going. That one is high. The MO for Verts become as small as possible. She's getting in that stance. Shrink that strike zone. Swings and misses 0 1. 
Well, she's not doing anything. She's just putting herself in an athletic stance. She's got her knees bent, solid base set up to swing hard and away. I like this little batting stance by Vert. Eddie Goodell reference here in the booth. That one looks in there for a strike. And now they're down to their final strike. Top of the order up next if Verts can find a way to get on base. Grace Weber trying to end it here. Reese Verts. The last hope for Canada. Tying run at the plate. Elimination game here at the World Series. That one is a little high. Now we're full. Vazadowski Day is going to be running from first on the pitch. The 3 2. That one is low. Inverts draws the walk. Now the top of the order is up for Canada. Great at bat by Verts to be disciplined on the plate with two strikes. But with her getting on, the top of the lineup comes up. And Rhea Bergen had a big hit last time up. Verts battles back from a 1-2 count to draw the two-out walk. And now the top of the order, Rhea Bergen. That one is low. Are you taking until you see a strike? I am right now. Up in the booth. <laughs> that one is in the inside corner, one and one. I think that's a good hold, though. That pitch inside would have been one she just fouled off. Definitely not in her wheelhouse. She's waiting for something big. Tying run at first base for Canada. Elimination game. Gotta have it here. That one is outside. Two and one. Well, it seems at times that Grace Weber is rushing her pitching, pitching motion. She's a very good pitcher, but as she rushes, it kind of throws off that release point. That one is way high. Three and one now. In an inning where it looked like Canada was going to go down one, two, three. A ball goes out of the middle of the shortstop. Allows a two-out batter to reach base. Then a walk. And now a 3-1 count to the leadoff batter, Rhea Bergen. Bergen swings at that one and misses three and two. Runners will be off again. Race Weber. Can she finish it here? The three two. That one is low and we got a walk. Back-to-back -back walks now, and the bases are loaded. Time run at second base. Again. You cannot kill Canada. <laughs> now conversation here in the circle, asking for some water. And Allie Danilak having a conversation with her third base coach, Caitlin McBeth. <laughs> Love that. Take a deep breath. Look at the smile, the giggle. So important to be able to just take a second to regroup, put the moment in perspective, and figure out how to be successful in this huge moment. We need an app. Come on. Let's go. Not wanting to use a plate vi or a visit to the circle on that one. The girls just needing some 
some water to cool down. Definitely another hot day here in Greenville. Head coach's daughter, Allie Danilak. Try and tie this up here. We'll see what she does. Tying run at second base. That one's out of the zone. One and oh. Do you take till you get a strike you here, Matt? You take till you get a strike, coach. That one way out. Two and oh. Again, the runner at third doesn't mean anything here, but it, it will if she scores and the next runner gets to third. Yeah, this, this game is one out away from being over. Filled his own with strikes. In there, first drive, two and one. Grace Weber. He's thrown every pitch in this game for the New England Regional Champs. Base is loaded. Tying run at second elimination game. That one out of the zone. Three and one. Hundred and thirty one pitches here for Weber. Ninety plus degrees here in the North Carolina sun. Got to find the zone here at three and one. Six to five. Where have we seen this before? Maybe the last two innings. <laughs> I mean, it's it's kind of been a carbon copy of what's been going on. But look at Allie, so excited to trot her way down to first base. Let's go. One run away from tying it up and bases loaded. to five Connecticut with the lead love that keep the positivity up it's Caitlin Macbeth the third base coach having the conversation with Megan Becker Sparingo now at third base for Connecticut. Tying run is at third. In the form of Reese Verts. Becker can be the hero with a base hit. Becker drives this one to left, it drops in front of the left fielder. Verts scores and we're tied again. In what was looking to be a quick one, two, three inning, Canada will not be <laughs> quieted. Continuing to put pressure, tying the ball game up again. Look at this. Pitch, first pitch of the at bat. Free swinging, driving it to left. Big hit by Megan Becker to tie this game up. And now Aaliyah Riapel, who gave up the two runs in the top of the seventh can drive home the winning run here. Fly ball, right field line. Coming over to make the catch is Marini. And we will go to the eighth inning in Greenville. Canada scores two to tie again. Matt Schick alongside Jenny Dalton Hill. Northwest team, Oregon. <laughs> like, well, I don't know when we're going to play. I, I guess we'll go up here. We'll walk up the hill. Let's go hit again, I let's guess. Go, let's go get ready. <laughs> again. Uh, that game uh, was supposed to start very soon. Yeah, 4 o'clock start. Definitely not going to be a 4 o'clock start now. Have you seen a scoreboard like that? 2-2-2, two, 2-2-2. Two, 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 two. It, this is amazing what has happened here. The resiliency 
that has been shown by Canada to match it every single inning that they've seen some runs put up on the board. But now we're going to try and move this thing along here because starting in the eighth inning, we got a runner on second base. And it's the last batted out, so that'll be Grace Weber who will start at second base. She's scheduled to bat last this inning. So the leadoff batter is the 11-hole hitter. And this is Audrey O'Connell. Yeah, the international tiebreaker rule in effect with the runner at second. And looks like they're going to try to bunt her over to third. Connell bunt out of the zone. Should be 2-0 and instead. It's 1-1. One and one. And again, you think about the strategies here. If you win this game, you play tomorrow. If a pitcher throws more than six innings, they cannot pitch tomorrow. So you got to think it's reappell the rest of the way. Bunt is put down. It's a good one. It gets through the first baseman and reappell. And it's an infield single. Reappell and Becker both trying to make a play. Nobody did. And Connecticut's in business. And it is almost like a slug bunt as she pushes this past the first baseman, almost past the pitcher. Reappell able to get a hold of it. Backhanded toss. Really nice toss, but just not in time. Maya Brown. Bunts that one foul. Situation like that, I'm surprised they don't take here and just allow Brown to steal and then put the bunt down. But I suppose if it's a strike, you're down 0-1. And, and I don't know now, why she's and, not going. And now there she's going. Go. Yeah, that. yeah. Nobody's covering second base. That that's saying you can have it. Here is a gift. So Connell now at second, Weber at third. Go ahead, run at third. Here's Maya Brown squaring, missing one and two. Coach Candrea at Arizona would always make sure everyone on the entire team could sacrifice bunt because bunts win ball games. Puts it in play to first. Play is to first for Becker. Go ahead run does score at seven to six. Wasn't a sack bunt, but just as good. Connecticut up one. And it's almost expected that that one run that starts at sec or that one runner at second base will come around to score. It was an added bonus to get O'Connell on as well. Yeah, it's not about that first run. It's can you get that second run in the inning? Sammy Marini is going to try and do just that. Well, and with a runner on third base, you typically see your defense pulled in, but the middles are actually playing regular depth. So it looks as though they're going to allow this run to score and just try to get the out at one. In there for a strike. Marini, time to drive in. O'Connell for the insurance run. Marini in the infield coming in to make the play is the third baseman Campbell two away Charging hard on that one. It can be a tough play to make a basket catch on that one worries always that you're gonna Catch it off the heel, but a really good job keeping it in the web and getting the second out of the inning So Marini pops out now the two-hole hitter Marina Cosmas Cosmas has walked all three times today. Yeah! One and one. Canada will have five, six, and seven due up in the order in the eighth. 
They'll start with a runner on second as well. Cosmos right back up the box and then on your hand, O'Connell. For the fourth consecutive inning, Connecticut scores two runs. Look for the youngest player on New England's team. This young player, Marina Cosmos, comes through in a big way. Hard shot right back up the middle. No, no chance for Aaliyah Riopelle to be able to come away with that one. An easy advancement. And for the fourth inning in a row, two runs have come across for New England. And now Marina Cosmas, who is your catcher today. You can pinch run, courtesy run for your pitcher or catcher with two outs. Last batted out, that's Marini. So Marini now at first base. Riley Fagan Davis with two outs. That one pounded to the shortstop who makes the catch. That's high brick, throws it down, and they go into the dugout. Canada. Stop me if you've heard this before. They need at least two runs to keep this game going. Italy warming up in the shade. Very, very smart. Will they take the field in a few minutes? Or will they have to wait even longer? We shall see. We are in the bottom of the eighth inning. Canada needs two to tie. It'll be Italy and Oregon coming up next on ESPN Plus. Aliyah Riappel, these international tie-breaking rules for the extra innings starting in the eighth. She begins on second base. Zeta Campbell will lead this inning off. Grace Weber Still in the circle. Foul ball. Elimination game. Loser goes home. Winner will play tomorrow. And if Connecticut wins, Grace Weber will not pitch tomorrow. Yeah, that's the thing with both of these teams. They had to make a decision at the sixth inning if they would allow their starter to continue on. One one to Campbell shows Bond foul. It has been a while since Canada has achieved success here at the Little League World Series. Last one back in 2018. That is nine consecutive losses in this Little League World Series. Lairitz Little League from Victoria, British Columbia was the last. Campbell pounds this one to left. Comes over the fielder's head. Rounding second and scoring easily is Riappel. And now the time runs at second base. The hardest hit ball of the day with a runner in scoring position for Canada. A huge hit coming off the bat of Zeta Campbell. You know? Addie McKenna Hansen had no shot at catching this one. No, that ball was absolutely crushed over the head of the left fielder. No chance. They were playing at pretty shallow depth in the outfield as no balls had really been hit with a ton of power out there today. That one, an exclamation point, and now one run away for Canada tying it up. Abigail Hydebrick. That one's in the dirt. Tying run at second base. This is the twilight zone. We need a shot of that scoreboard eventually. I mean, they, I've never experienced anything like this. Abigail Heidrich swings it one out of the zone. One and one. A bunch of twos. Deuce is wild here. Deuces are wild. No, this game is wild. The way that Canada is able to respond every single time when someone scores on them is Phenomenal. I've not seen a team respond like this continuously. 
You come all this way from Alberta, you might as well stay a while. And you know what? Even if you if you lose this game, you feel like you played three or four. <laughs> no doubt. Abigail Heidbrink, the two one, out of his zone, three and one, and one ball away from putting the winning run on base. Canada, the first three innings in their first two games, no runs. After the first three innings, they scored 16 combined runs here in the last two games. Heidbrink skies this one going to be a tough play. That's going to drop in front of the center fielder. Fagan Davis, oh, but the runner heads to third. And now Campbell coming back, and she's saved. Campbell saw the ball drop and said, you know what? I'm going to take third base. And then said, I oh, should stay. Wait, maybe I shouldn't because the ball literally dropped about 20 feet away from me. It doesn't kick away. Good play by the center fielder, Rylan, Riley Fagan Davis. And then heads up base running to realize the mistake and get back in time. Woo. Campbell now. Still at second base. Heidbrink at first. Heidbrink is now the winning run. Nobody out here in the eighth. Cleo Caroto shows butt in the dirt. Good stop by Marina Cosmos, back behind the plate, preventing the advancement on the base pass. So important to be a wall back there behind the dish right now to keep the runner at second. Corrodo offers on a bunt way out of the zone. Yeah, that's when you know emotions are high and you're starting to press in the box because as you square, the bat should be at the top of your zone, and as soon as the ball gets above it, you just pull back. Roto puts it down. It's a great one. Gonna be a tough play. There's the play. An infield single off of the bunt. The bases are loaded yet again. Will Connecticut be able to keep Canada from scoring? Drag bunt, beautiful spot after a tough pitch. The one before she went for it way out of the zone, puts a beautiful bunt down to load the bases. Fukushima to right, that's gonna drop. Run, run, course comes home, we're tied at eight. Campbell scores from third on the RBI single from Fukushima. And now the winning runs at third. And the crazy part about it is you've got nobody out. This Canada team is not going away. They are that annoying little brother that won't just let you have your time. Canada does not want to go home. Grace, Grace coming. Fouls that one back. Nothing but twos on the scoreboard. And a couple of eights. Grace Cummins trying to turn that two into a three. And this game that looked like a loss into a win. Coming. Ground ball. Got to come home. They get the force out at home. As Heidbrink is gunned out. Score it six to two. And again, one out, bases loaded. And this is such a good play defensively with the defense pulled in in the baseline. She goes home with it. Cosmos with the foot squarely planted on home plate, plays it just like a first baseman. Good job to secure it in the glove with two hands. Paige Hipkin now can be the hero, the 10-hole hitter for Canada. We are tied again here in the eighth inning. Cleo Caroto, winning run at third. Hipkin back to the pitcher, throw home, get the fours, throwing to third, but she's got to go! She didn't run! 
And now they step on the base. And it's a double play to end the inning. Incredible. How many twos is enough, Matt? Jenny, <laughs> I'm speechless. <laughs> Bad chick, Jenny down the hill. Ground ball. Gotta go, Jenny. Gotta, gotta go. go. Ground ball. You gotta make sure that you advance quickly. And for some reason, Emma Fukushima just did not advance. And they had to talk back the defenders to say, just touch third base. But the players for the 4 o'clock game. Hanging out. Hanging out. I saw Steve Yang there. And they're off, actually. They're today. not here. They play tomorrow. <laughs> right. They're just so hanging they're just out here watching. to watch. They're getting a lot of free softball and a lot of twos up on the board. There's the team that we will see next. Italy, are. Oregon taking on Italy. Supposed to be starting in six minutes. Steve Yang say, texting and asking his wife, when do you think this game will start? Or this game will end. Supposed to start in six minutes. It's going to be weird <laughs> when we have two games going on in the same field at the same time. Emily Sparingo. Now at the plate again, tie break rules, international rules. Eighth inning and beyond, we have a runner at second base. I've never seen anything like it. This will be one of those games, win or lose, everyone's going to be talking about. Pop out to the shortstop, one away. Danny Katansky now at the plate. On well, the starting pitcher, gets the first out of the inning. Hydebrink now at short. Katansky trying to drive in that run. In the international rules, you really got to get that runner from second home. That's almost a given. The runner in scoring position. Tansky has been on base twice. Puts the butt down. It's a good one to third. Campbell's got to be quick and out in time. Second base is wide open there. Katansky probably could have just gone to second. I think I could have come out of the stands and advanced to second on that. There is nobody near second base. Beautiful bunt. Nobody covering second, not even the center fielder. So in that situation, as a first base coach, you've got to be saying, looking to that to say, turn, go, take it, put yourself in scoring position. Yeah, should probably be running here. Kaylee Glenn now at the plate. Katansky is going on the take. You give up the strike, so it's 0-1. Go ahead, run a third. Haley Glenn at the plate. Her dad coaching third. Good block back there by Rhea Bergen, who was not the starting catcher, but came into the game when the pitching change happened in the circle. Put the barrel on it. Haley Glenn at the plate, the 2 1. 3 and 1. Canada the fans got the money's worth today. Everybody at the ballpark. 3 1 to Glenn. That is high, and the bases are loaded for, I believe, the 27th time today. <laughs> These teams are fighting so well. Love the tenacity of both of these teams. This game closing in on three hours old. Holly Kuhn now at the plate. Looks at a first pitch strike. Coon 
That one's going to be an ace hit. Fagan Davis scores. Katansky rounding third. She will score. And it's 10-8. Two have come home again for Connecticut. Another great job base running by Danny Katansky. If that's enough twos, I'm excited to see a three up there at some point. But this hit to the right side, good job letting it travel, driving the ball the other way, allowing your base runner to get in, but not just scoring one, but putting two on the board as Danny Katansky puts and plates herself again, one of the most aggressive base runners on this Connecticut squad. Patty McKenna Hanson. One and one. Ground ball to third. Up with it. Over to first. Good play for Hyde. Brink. Two away. We are in the ninth inning. Two runs have come home for Connecticut for the fifth consecutive inning. Emmy ba Emma Bonanno trying to turn it into a three, perhaps a four with a base hit. Connecticut not in unfamiliar territory. They won a nine inning game over Missouri last year on this very field. Crazy things happen when Milford and Connecticut are present. The 1-1 one -one to Bonanno. Right back up the box. Third run of the game, and the inning scores. The fourth run of the inning is going to score as well. Holly Coon slides in. Four have scored in the ninth. It's 12-8, Connecticut. I mean, I don't know what to do with this. We haven't seen a number other than a two up on the scoreboard for quite some time in an inning. Huge hit by Emma Bonanno. Struck out in her last at bat, looking at a strikeout, looking at a strike in a situation that could have won the game, but now comes through in a tight spot, plates two more runs. What is that not what is that number there in the ninth inning? What I is think that? you add the seventh and the eighth inning together to <laughs> okay. get that. Also that number at the bottom, 401 PM Eastern time. Yeah. About three hours old. Three three minutes from three hours. 12 to 8 in the ninth inning, a marathon game that will be remembered for a long time. Bonanno at second base, a four run lead for Connecticut. Well, Matt, I'm really impressed with the way Aaliyah Riopel has taken the circle today after the bumpy ride she had in their opener. She has really settled in and helped herself out in the circle by filling the zone with strikes and allowing her defense to play. This Connecticut team just won't go away. Grace Weber. Swings and misses at the nice soft speed from Maria Pell. But four a score in the ninth inning. Connecticut, was that enough? Will it be enough? We are going to find out. Now, if you're in Greenville, you might as well stay a while. Might as well play a while. They'll try and finish it next. Oh, the pro softball players on hand watching the youngsters play their hearts out. This is an elimination game. It's very clear nobody wants to go home. Connecticut and Canada, 12 to 8. Connecticut with the lead, uh, nine innings so far. How's your scorecard look? It's not about my scorecard. I literally just ran out of lead in my pencil. I got to get out another pencil. You're leadless. I'm leadless. You're without lead. <laughs> Who uses a pencil? Who does me? that? Are you kidding me? Um, I need the eraser, but this is ridiculous. I did not expect any of our scorecards to be this full. That is just an amazing. I'm going to send this to the Little League World Series Hall of Fame. Oh, I think that's a perfect spot. Remember where you were. 
This game was scoreless until the fifth inning. Canada trailed every inning since the fifth. They've never had the lead, but they've scored eight runs. A lot of emotions coming out. This game has been long. These girls are tired. They have played their hearts out on the field. Third base coach having the conversation there. And that was a one offensive conference, as you see the home plate umpire. Ben Aguilera making that known. Ryan Bazandowski did. In there for a strike, going to. Yeah, the international tie break rules. You've got Paige Hipkin on second base to start the inning. Nice way to fight that changeup off, knowing that she's got her back against the wall in an 0-2 count. You have to put the barrel on the ball. Good recovery. Had a little bit of emotion during this at bat, able to calm herself down and really attack the zone. Fouls that one back. Nice job. One hundred fifty five pitches here for Grace Weber pitched every pitch of this game. We're in the ninth inning trying to finish it. Ryan Bazandowski day pops this one up. Grace Weber has it for the first very important out. And we need to revisit the fact that if this Connecticut team advances to tomorrow. Grace Weber will not be able to tow the rubber. They will have to go to a different pitcher, knowing that she has pitched more than six innings today. Remember, back in the sixth inning, Canada had the bases loaded and one out. Grace Weber, with a tie game, was able to get out of it. That was a critical juncture. The last inning had the bases loaded as well. She got out of it. That one gets by the pitch, by the catcher, Cosmos. Remembering that Paige Hipkin started the inning over on second base. She advances on that ball past the catcher and puts herself 60 feet away. Yeah, four-run lead, plays to one. Reese Mertz looks at that one, 2-0. and oh. Mertz has struck out twice. She walked and scored in the seventh. Scoring that tying run. The 2-0. Three and oh. Remember back when you thought you weren't going to see Reese Burtz hit again? In her fourth plate appearance. Three and one. In a typical Little League game, you might see the bottom of the lineup hit twice. Might. We've now seen four times for the last batter on Canada's team come to the plate. And for the second time, she reaches with a walk. Top of the order now up for Canada. One out. Canada down four. Elimination game at the Little League World Series. This game is more, th more than three hours old. Well, in visiting the circle, this is a conversation about what they're going to do with the first and third situation. Are they going to throw through, knowing that they've got a four-run lead? I might try to get the out at second, rather than worrying about that run coming across the score. Reese Verts is pretty quick. That would be a good throw. This one is pounded in the center field. Fagan Davis making the catch, tagging from third, throwing home. Oh, the throw would have gotten her. And now Verts heads to second base. So the run does score. It's 12 to 9 as Hipkin tags from third, but two big outs. 
Ali Danilek, the last hope for Canada. Don't want to make out, make the last out at third base. Reese Verts. This is the 50th batter Grace Weber has faced today. Yeah, typical Little League game 20, 20, or not 20, obviously, but between 20 and 30 at bats, typically, right? Maybe 35 on an extreme day. This is a lot. We are in the ninth inning. Danilak going over to make the catch. Fagan Davis makes the grab. And in a World Series marathon, Connecticut wins it 12 to 9 and eliminates Canada. For a team last night that had so much emotion in the struggle of a loss against New York, they come away in a marathon in a 12 9 win with so many twos on the board. Kudos to Canada showing resiliency and grit, fighting back every single inning, never going down quiet after being scored on in the fifth. And for Canada, it's the end of the road. It was a big swing by Ali Danilak. She put the ball in play so hard, but out there in center, Riley Fagan Davis, way too good, gets the out, ends the game, and Connecticut survives to see tomorrow. And for a team that has rallied around the movie Titanic, their heart will go on. Never let go. 12 to 9 win for Connecticut. Milford Little League advances. And they will take on the winner of Italy and Oregon. That is our next game coming up on ESPN+. Plus. Thanks to all of our crew. It wasn't just the players working hard today. A lot of crew with ESPN+. Plus. Our camera operators, producer Robin, director Monica, everyone behind the scenes. Our stats extraordinaire, Dan and everyone helped putting this together. Good sportsmanship showed there between Connecticut and Canada. And a game that lasted three hours and six minutes. Connecticut survives in Greenville.